We're going to go ahead and sing kind of a, a classic. Uh, number one in the book, the very first song in the book. How great is our God? Again, it's number one in the book. How great is our God? And we're just singing about how great and good He is. Let's yeah. just praise Him and worship Him this morning.
So hard to see it to me. 
so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victories Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it You take the broken Raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am i 
those floodgates open. <laughs> let the floodgates open. Don't hold it up. Don't beat it up. Don't hold it back. Just let it go. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. Just let the floodgates open. church is the instrument that God's going to pour himself through to the world. And I sense that here in this place. I sense that the presence of God is that real, is that personal for each of us. But I, I just keep hearing that over and over during the worship, that there is a freshness that's coming, that's rising up in the hearts of God's people. Things, and there's a lot of drudgery and things that have, is behind us, things that we've dealt with in our own personal lives and you know, we've had our days and weeks and months, sometimes years of doubt and unbelief and things that we don't know what's going on. But God's bringing a new, a newness, a freshness to the body of Christ, lifting our hearts, more in a sense of faith and hope and love. And that's going to be the capstone of this move of God, is the love of God that's rising in the hearts of His people. And then there's a greater love that's prevailing in the hearts of over all the Lord's enemies, over all His enemies in our minds, our thoughts, and in our hearts. And I, I just praise God for that. Here today, I just Thank sense that in, in the spirit of God's doing that. Thank you, God, for that word. I receive that. That's true. That's true. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God has renewed his love in people this morning. I'm not saying you didn't know he didn't love you. Uh, you know, I'm not saying you didn't know already that he loved you. But his love has been made new because he does love you. Yes. And I felt just like this morning, almost like a, a rallying of his troops. Like sometimes you fight for a while and you kind of you're worn down, you're tired or whatever. But I felt like this morning God kept bringing that term to me, just rallying his troops for a purpose. Because we're here, each and every one of us, for a purpose.
saying that, that God's been dealing with them, that they were too focused on a mission and wanting to try to make things happen when they should have been just flowing through him and him guide you into into it happening. And I think he's trying to do that with a lot of his people right now. Yeah. It's just it's just Jesus. Because we can't do that mission without him. mentioned Wednesday night a dear friend who um, had admitted and I, I love humility don't you love humility when you see somebody humble themselves you respect them even more we don't humble ourselves sometimes because we think it'll make us look weak no it's the way of God and my friend humbled himself and said I've been focused on my calling I'm trying to make my calling happen when all I needed to focus on was just being a son of God when I focus on that, then the calling will come. Just him, relationship. So yeah, I'm seeing that too. And even God showed me this week. Some of us have gone into a time of fasting, and he showed me such a different view of fasting this week. Oh, but it just, it's, it's like a time of being away with your, with your groom, with your, you know, bridegroom. A time, it's not like we're trying to get this more power with God, or it's not even that we're necessarily trying to hear him more, although we are. But it's meant to be a time pulled away with our bridegroom, like almost like a honeymoon. That's yeah. what he showed me this week. Because think about it, what it says in Scripture. They come to Jesus and saying, you know, your followers aren't fasting like the rest of us. And he says that's because the bridegroom is with you right now. When the bridegroom is taken away, they will fast in that day. They are fasting because they want to have that connection to the bridegroom who is no longer with them on earth. Right, right. It's all about the bridegroom. It's all about intimacy. Yes. It's not about, you know, oh, I want to fulfill my calling to let me access more power. That will come. But it's just about drawing away with your bridegroom. Yes. Yes. Don't you, don't you feel these words you're hearing? when I think it was when Richard was speaking a minute ago. I remember something that happened to me here maybe five years ago. I was here alone. I was just laid out on the floor. Just I was literally <coughs> tormented by some things. And I was just praying and seeking and striving. And I, I felt the Lord uh, just tell me to focus on just how much he loves me. And I, I, could, I, I had trouble with that. I couldn't see how he could love me. And then he said to me, I heard it clearly. He said, it's like when you used to go take the eggs with you, Grandpa. Y'all, I'll tell you the truth. I went a year and didn't know what that meant. I mean, I did take the eggs. Yeah, I did take the eggs with Grandpa. And then one day it came in such a burst of revelation that it came back to me as he was talking. The love of God. He showed me that my Grandpa loved me so much. That he couldn't wait to come pick me up when I was a little girl. You remember that, Mama? Yes. He would take the eggs from their chicken houses, yes. the rural, well, I 
to say that word, roll, roll, call, <laughs> to drop, that's the word I'm trying to say, to drop the eggs off, and he just couldn't wait to come pick me up, so I could ride with him. You know, I don't know what I did, I don't remember, I was probably, he's probably thinking, why'd I pick her up? She's chattering my ears off. Oh, <laughs> but he took me, he'd come pick me up, he couldn't wait, and I couldn't wait. And it hit me clearly, that's how God, much God loves us. That it's just like one-on-one, he just chose, like grandpa's, like picking me to go take the eggs with him, to help him. And then, and then he loved me all the way there, just talked to him. He never said much, but when he did, it was with love. He loves you like that. Jesus loves you like that. And he chose you, 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 you. We see it sometimes a big group thing, and we think, well, man, that Heather, she goes and sings all over the world for the Lord, and she's but not me. She's He chose us all individually in a group. Isn't that paradoxical almost? He chose us all individually. Like that old song. Remember that old song when he was on the cross? When you when I was on his mind. You remember that? Yeah, individually. He would choose you to go take the eggs with him if he needed to take eggs. But as it is, he just needs you to be in a relationship. Oh, anybody else got a good word? I just kind of felt like um, I, I've been struggling to say the Lord um, about like a rewriting. Ooh, I like that. What's that? Rick Kinley. Is that what you feel? Like a Rick, you've been feeling that since Belinda's lead in Noah, apparently, but Vince Belinda's been messaging me about the similar thing. There's a rekindling, relighting. And yes, that last great outpouring of the Spirit of God on earth is His love. It's, a, it's the love of God. When He first revealed that to me, I'll, I'm going to tell you that tr- I'm transparent. I'm not perfect. Y'all know it. So I'm going to be transparent and tell you when he revealed that to me after leaving a Walnut Cove meeting years ago, I was like, what? The love of God? I thought it was going to be like signs, wonders, miracles, this great outpouring, the last outpouring of God. And you're telling me it's your love. I mean, I know you love me. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I was thinking, I was thinking everybody preaches that, even the non-Pentecostal types, everybody preaches the love of God. I thought it was just going to be something we had cornered to market on, you know. Pentecostals. But he was so, then he gave me the revelation of what it was really all about. The love of God is this last great outpouring. Yeah, the signs, wonders, and miracles will happen through that, but the signs, wonders, and miracles aren't the focus. They just come. Fringe benefit that comes along with it. Oh, praise God. Rekindling, sister. I feel that. Anybody else feel a word from the Lord? Something did you experience? Something that and it may be private, you may not want to tell us. Is there uh, anything? Can I share a testimony? Please, yes. Um, this, this happened uh, about uh, a week and a half ago. I uh, was visiting with my mom, which is out of town, a couple hour drive. And uh, I, I was there. Uh, my One of my brothers asked me if I wanted to go with him to the hospital to see. Uh, his wife's brothers in the hospital. And so anyway, uh, they found and discovered that he had cancer, lung cancer, and um, had been a smoker for I don't know how many years, a lot of years. And um, when we were there, and I, I knew, uh, his name was Randy, Randy Hams, and I knew Randy, uh, you know, been knowing him for years, and I uh, always liked him, you know. And, uh, but when I was there, um, I was just kind of letting Frank, my brother Frank, do the talking, and I was just kind of sitting back and uh, just listening. I was just listening to all I was doing, and, and uh, if I had, you know, just kind of silently praying, you know, Lord, what, what, what can I say to Randy? You know, he, he didn't really know the Lord, and uh, but I, I heard in my spirit. Uh, I mean, all I could. I felt a sense of faith is what I felt. And I just spoke it out when I told him, I said, Randy, I believe you're going to get to go home. And uh, if you would have saw him, I mean, he, I'm not kidding. He was uh, like, he looked like that. I mean, his, his, he had so much fluid on his body, his upper chest, arms, everything was swollen. Head, everything was swollen. And uh, 
So they, they just didn't know that he would even make it. And I said, uh, but I, I spoke it out of what, what I was sensing in my spirit that, uh, Randy, you, I believe you're going to get to go home. And I started talking to him out of that. But I learned something through that. I believe where, we're, where God is moving his people is that um, in, in this move of the Lord in, in this day, uh, that he, he's, he's bringing a greater sense of faith that we will speak out of faith and speak faith into the hearts of, of others. I believe that it, it, yesterday, uh, this was about a week and a half ago, so yesterday I called him. He said, uh, I'm just getting out of the car. I'm pulling our, we just, they just pulled in their dog and got home. And it's, he sounded so much better. It's like life could come back in him. And all. So I, I believe that, and this is what, just like what we were talking about today, faith works by love. Faith works by love. So, so the more we, and I've been asking the Lord praying that too, not for myself, but for the body too. That Lord, uh, fill our hearts with your love, God. Baptize us with your love. Whatever it looks like, God, fill our hearts with your love. That, that the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ can be made manifest in the earth. And it said that, you know, the world doesn't operate by faith, but it says that they, when they uh, see Christ in you, it said that the, that the world might believe. That's what John 17 says, that the world might believe that you have sent the Son, so that, that the Son would be made manifest to his people, to, to the body of Christ. Yeah. So it, it's not far off. That's my point. It's not far off. It's not way, way out there, yeah. way down the road. It's, faith is in our hearts now. Yeah. The word is not even in your mouth as you speak. You can speak faith to others. So just simply, you know, uh, listen. Just be attentive to the Spirit. You know, know that God's in you, and learn to listen out of that knowing, that inner knowing. And God will, God will use you. God will. It, it, no matter where you at, it, you could be at Walmart, a guest club, whatever. God will use you in different ways in, in speaking faith in, in the hearts of people. Praise God. And that's a confirmation because literally just this morning I was reading the Word and I was reading about how Jesus did one of his, you know, signs and wonders, and it was talking about how he was moved with compassion. And I never really thought of it before how I did until this morning. I, I, I was thinking about, you know. Oftentimes I wondered if maybe I was too motivated by wanting to just do a great sign or see a great sign or a, do a great miracle that I could then share. When, and I, it wasn't like from a, like a me point of view, like I want to do this. It was, But it was like from a point of, and then I can tell everybody about it and it'll increase their faith. But I think if the motive was slightly off there and I, I just thought like I need to pray more about letting my heart, you know, Break for what breaks his, letting letting me feel that compassion that he feels for those people, and let that be a motivation for for them, you know, praying and believing in faith for that sign or wonder. But it's, again, it goes back to love. Jesus, Chelsea had felt that goes with that is that people who are doing everything for his glory will be people of integrity. As I said last week, I, when she said that word to me, I didn't even know if it was in the Bible. I'm so sorry. I, I do. I really do read the Bible. But I didn't know <laughs> integrity was in the Bible, but it is many times. In several versions, not just KJV, but several. People of integrity and we're going to be dealing with that more through the year. But right now, what I feel is, first of all, the people who move in that love and who are speaking that faith to others through love are people in te of integrity. Because the Bible talks about how easy it is to uh, love those who love you. You know, 
know, that's easy. The heathen can do that. Charles Manson in prison probably loved somebody. But it's a little harder when you pour out the love of God when they don't like you or they're talking about you or they're not doing you right even. When you can pour out that love. I feel that that is... Um, I feel that when we talk about the last move of God, and we've been, we've been, oh, we older Pentecostals have been hearing it for years, that last move of God. Uh, he's changing up the way it's going to look. It's going to be what he always planned. I think we were maybe seeing it a different way, but it's going to be people who can move in the supernatural in many ways. Not just move in the supernatural to say, be healed or. You know, cast the devil out. Yeah, we're supposed to be doing that too because we do that out of love. You want people to be set free from devils or sickness or whatever. But it's going to also be a people who can move in the supernatural when it comes to the love of God. Because that's when people, they're, yeah, they're going to take note when you lay hands on somebody in a wheelchair and they stand up and walk. They're going to take note of that. But they're also going to take note when you are a person of integrity and you walk in such love that nothing anybody does gets you out of your love walk. Reggie, our friend Reggie, who used to be with us here, Reggie used to always say, I've got to guard my love walk. I've got to guard my love walk. Even when he was going through really bad things, people, people hurting him, and he was just like, i got to guard my love walk. This love walk will speak faith to others. Speak faith. Oh, God. I think all of that corresponds to we have a prophetic word. I don't I don't know who knows or who doesn't who's watched the services, but on New Year's Day I preached about the prophetic word God gave us. He gave us the prophetic word. He's he's looking for people who will take on the impossible. What looks impossible. Nothing's impossible for him. But he's looking for people who are willing to speak the faith that maybe nobody else is, is speaking out there may be the only person that there's there's many people that you're the only person that they know who can speak that faith to them it's easy to commiserate with somebody and the bible does say we are to rejoice with those who rejoice and grieve with those who grieve but it's easy to commiserate when somebody's going through a hard time and say i know bless your heart oh i hate that for you well, I know they did you wrong, and I can't believe that. I'm with you. We just can't. I don't can't believe they did. It's easy to do all that. What's harder to do is overcome that by the supernatural to speak faith, the faith of God. Yes, you might pat them on the back and say, I am so sorry that happened to you. I know that hurt you. But God says, what does God say? Ooh, what does God say? People of integrity are going to rise up in this last day and speak what thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. My son, uh, this son, I got two, this son right here asked me the other day doing schoolwork, how did the Sabbath come up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were reading uh, Farmer Boy, Little House on the Prairie series. We're reading about Almanzo, Farmer Boy. And, uh, back then, a lot of the kids hated Sundays. You read it in Laura Ingalls Wilder's book. It, they just, because Sunday, they couldn't do anything. You couldn't even really laugh or smile. You had to just sit. On Sunday after you left church, two hour sermon. That didn't include the singing and stuff. You're talking two hour sermon. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but they weren't allowed to move. They had to sit straight and not move, not fidget, and look straight at the preacher the whole time for two hours. These are kids, little kids. And then when they came home, they had to sit. They couldn't whittle their, you know, toys or play with anything. They had to just sit. And we were talking about that, and I said the Sabbath was never meant to be that. First of all, that's a whole other thing, but it was never meant to be that. And uh, and then he said something about, like, why can't they see that the Sabbath wasn't ever Sunday? Like, why do they always make it Sunday? And I'm not preaching on that, but he brought it up to say, how come people can't see? I said, I hadn't really thought about that. I'm like, no. You know, this, he said, can't they read the Bible and see the Sabbath was always the seventh day that God never changed it? And he was bringing up points to me, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. He said, why can't they see? 
And I thought about it because he said, he said, because it's right there in the Word. I thought, wow, it's right there in the Word. Now, I'm not preaching that you keep Sunday as your Sabbath. I'm not mad at you, whatever. That's that's a whole other issue. Um, it was, a, you know, it was an emperor that changed that long ago and made it Sunday. Whatever, whatever you do, I'm, I'm okay. I still believe the Sabbath is the seventh day. The point is, um, Saturday. I'm sorry. Yeah, it starts at sunset Friday. Friday. Yeah, I'm, you're right. Thank you, Megan. Starts Friday night at sunset and runs through Saturday night. That's still the Sabbath. God never changed it. However, thus saith the Lord. He kept saying to me, "Why can't they see? Why can't they see? What? Why can't they see?" Thus saith the Lord. God's people of integrity in this last day are going to be people who are able to speak what the Word says. What the Word says. Not what your church says necessarily. What does the Word say? If, and I'll tell you this sincerely. If you see me and hear me preaching something you think is false, please come tell me. You can rescue my soul from a bondage. Please come tell me. I'm not going to be mad at you. If I'm a person of integrity, I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm going to want to sit down and talk to you. And, and if I still think I'm right, I'm still not going to be mad at you. I'm going to appreciate the fact that you came to me. You didn't go behind my back. People of integrity, ooh, I just felt that. People of integrity are going to speak transparently. They're going to speak honestly. They're going to use the wisdom of God to know when to speak. <coughs> Just like Richard did, he said he sat there in that hospital room that day and he, he listened to the Spirit while he was listening and he felt from the Spirit when it was time to speak. It's not always time to speak just as soon as something happens and you fly in with what you think right then because sometimes later you back up and go, whoo, that is not what I was supposed to say. People of integrity who are doing everything for the glory of God are going to hear what thus saith the Lord, what thus saith the Word, because what did Jesus say? He said that he didn't do anything. Somebody quote it. Who's got you know it? I don't know the exact verse, but multiple different places. Yeah, do multiple different places. He did what he heard from his father. He didn't do anything till he heard from his father. People are of integrity are gonna walk that path. We are I, I am encouraged. When you think about this people of in, integrity thing, I want you to be encouraged. I don't want you to feel like, oh. That's hard. I don't know if I can do that. Uh, I'm not going to measure up to that, I don't think. You start backing off. I want you to be encouraged that we are going to be people of integrity. Why? Because we're going to do everything for the glory of God so you don't fail there. You don't have to think about being a person of integrity when you do everything for the glory of God. There's one scripture I do want to read to you from what I have. We've already heard several scriptures quoted here, but there is one definitely I want to read to you. Because if you're asking God, how can I possibly live this lifestyle, this person of integrity? This is what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1.12. 2 Corinthians 1.12. Now this is our boast. Now you back on and go, what? He's getting ready to brag? He's boasting? Just saying it like he said it in the English translation. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you, with integrity, there's that word, and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. That's how you live a life of integrity. Listen to this again. Paul's saying, now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world. Let's stop right there just a minute. We've conducted ourselves in the world. He goes on right after that to say, and among all y'all. He didn't say all y'all. He wasn't Southern. But, you know, all y'all. First he said, we've conducted ourselves in the world. And especially in our relations with you. With integrity and godly sincerity. We are to conduct ourselves out there amongst them all. With integrity and godly sincerity. I had a lady, this has been probably 30 something years ago. I had a lady come to me. I was a youngster in my church. And she came to me and said that uh, she was uh, at a good place of business. And she saw somebody from our church come into that place of business. 
and be upset that they didn't do something right to his car and just let him have it. Just let him have it. And she went to this person, who was a leader in the church, went to this person, it wasn't my pastor, went to somebody and said, uh, why did you do that? You, that was ugly, the way you talked to that person. And he said, that was business. He said, church is one thing, but that's business. Mm. He said, out there in the world, that's business. There's no difference. If you are treating everybody in here differently than you're treating everybody out there, you're not moving in the love of God. The love of God is supernatural. It'll help you overcome. I'm not telling you, I'm telling you you're not gonna feel hurt sometimes, or you're not gonna feel like you wanna just tell them. You know, sometimes we wanna just tell them. Of course, we're not gonna cuss or anything. We just wanna tell them. You're gonna feel that way sometimes because that's the flesh. Anybody not flesh in here? I'm flesh. I feel that way sometimes. We overcome by the love of God. We overcome by that supernatural power of God so that we conduct ourselves with integrity out in the world, the way Paul said, just as we do among our relations with you all. And as we said last week, here's the issue. You're, you're not perfect yet. So sometimes you might not handle something right. What do you do when you don't handle something right? Number one, you, you repent. God, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I Why did I say that? I'm so sorry, God. I don't want to do that. I ask you to forgive me. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to turn and do the right thing. And what do you do? Secondarily, as led by the Holy Ghost, you might have to go to somebody and humble yourself. So if you want to be a person of integrity, as Paul was, even out in the world, if you somehow mess it up, humble yourself. And that will make that person, even if they're mad at you, even if they don't like what you said to them, that can make that person admire you more than they did before you got mad. I'm not saying go get mad and then repent and then go, no, don't do that. But if you happen to mess up, humble yourself. People of integrity show humility. Humility. That hurts us sometimes, doesn't it? Humility is like our flesh does not want to humble ourselves. But go to somebody and just say, I am so sorry. I'm sorry I acted that way. I've seen my husband do it on the ball field more than once. I, I saw, I, was it this past year, I think? He went to somebody that he had an attitude against years ago, what? Yeah. <laughs> about her going like this with the scrub. You know? It's like um, he, he uh, got mad at somebody on the ball field one day. I didn't hear any bad words or anything. He just... Didn't like what he saw. And that was a long time ago, y'all. And this year, he went to that person this past year and said, you know what, years ago, I acted this way to you, and that wasn't right, and I am sorry I did that. Now, I don't remember how the guy reacted. I guess he received your apology. He remembered it. Oh, he remembered <laughs> it. You don't forget stuff like that. When I'm up on the hill going, Alan, if you keep doing that, I'm going home. I'm going to drive home to Alan. <laughs> Leave him alone. Uh, that made an impression. Now, they both both things made an impression. Obviously, he remembered it. But the, the humility probably made a bigger impression. You know why? Because it was for the glory of God. And you know why? Because it glorified God. You know why? Because it's not in Alan's flesh to go back years later and repent to that person. Face to face, it's not in us. It's super, ooh, Sid Ross would say, it's supernatural for us to move in the realm of humility and forgiveness. But that's the love of God. So when Paul said this, he said, we have we have a good conscience, he said, that we've carried ourselves with integrity out there and amongst you. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. We relied on God's grace to do it. So when you're thinking, I can't do it, I don't know how to do it. How am I gonna be that person of integrity? How am I gonna move in that love? You're going to have to depend on God's grace. Oh, I just felt that. Oh, I just felt that. God's grace is what he poured out on you. It's that unmerited favor and mercy that he's poured out on you, and you didn't deserve it. You know, 
I look at my mama back there. Don't you, don't everybody turn around and look at mama. As soon as I said that, they did. I look at my mama and it's like, how could you know? How could my mama ever have needed God's grace like I did? Trust me. How I just can't even. She, she's just so wonderful. I'm like, how could mama ever have to? But you know what? Nobody's perfect, and nobody can measure up. But by the grace of God, oh, right. it's just His grace and His mercy, and we are to encourage others. Oh, we are to encourage others out there with this good news that God's grace and mercy is available to all. It's available to everybody. Well, not me. I've done too much. I was this and that, and I, there's no way you could ever. Yes, way. There is way. Because his mercy you, and his grace, you didn't deserve it in the first place. I didn't deserve it. But he gave it anyway. People of integrity, I might just start in, uh, calling y'all that because that's what I believe you are. People of integrity, you're going to go out in this world and you're going to change this. You're going to change this world. Richard's right. It's not way out there somewhere like, it, like in the 40s in the old tent revivals and they're preaching about that great move of God coming. It's not way out there anymore. I believe it is even now. I believe even now we are seeing it being rekindled. We're seeing that word that I like that, that revitalization. We're seeing it. It's time to move in it. It is time to move in it. Don't delay. If you're sitting here right now, or maybe somebody there, and you know that you're not really on the relationship path with the Lord you need to be, remedy that today. Mm -hmm. Just repent. Lord, I am so sorry. I receive your blood sacrifice for all these sins. I'm sorry. I'm going to turn from them and ask you to help me, God. And I just want to be a follower of you, Jesus. I don't know a sinner's prayer. I don't even remember that little sinner's prayer. I'm not saying it was bad or good. I don't remember it. I'm just saying, you talk to him. That's right. You talk to him. And just say your heart. He already knows it. You say, why do I need to say it? Because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an humbling thing when you confess. And that's a beautiful thing. Humility is beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. Jesus was humble. So just tell him in your words. Just tell him. Lord, I'm not measuring up and I know it, but I want to, God. What's that thing Richard always says from that guy? That intercessor? Willing to be willing. What is that again? Willing. willing to be willing. Yeah. Yes. Just pray, Lord, make me willing to be willing. I want to be willing. I am. I am willing to be willing. <laughs> I want to get it right. There it is. That I am willing to be willing. Is that yes, right? Yes, you said, Lord, I, I'm not willing, but I'm willing to be willing. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I'm not willing, yeah. but I'm willing. You recognize his flesh, the weakness of his flesh. He said, you know, I, I realize this about myself. So I'm not willing to do this, but I'm willing to be willing. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Ever since you said that, I can't ever get it quite right and have to ask my kids. But thank you, Richard's here and he said it right. Kind of rehearse it too. Yes. yes. I'm not willing, but I'm willing to be willing. Recognize that you can't do it in yourself. It's by the grace of God, Paul said. It's not worldly wisdom. You read all the books you want about how to do, how to be a better person. I'm not saying that's wrong, but it's the grace of God. Yes. Now, I feel that I was to encourage you with that and the whole theme of what we've heard all around this room today. I keep thinking about the wells of revival that Belinda said. You are that well of revival. You come to church at the well. It's a place. We are the church. But you're a well of revival yourself. Everywhere you go, you're a well of revival. It's just welling up through you. So take it, let's take it out. Let's take it out there to the world and preach this gospel, this good news of him and it's all for his glory I don't care if anybody knows my name your name I, I, the only reason I want them to know the name of the church is so they know where to come if they needed to not be like ooh well <laughs> on TV thank you Alan that's the way I feel like the well Jesus 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 for his glory Woo! for his glory we're going to be people of integrity for his glory. We're going to overcome supernaturally everything in love. In love. 
Uh, does anybody else have a word from God you're feeling? Because what I've heard is great so far. I feel him. Anybody else? I want to encourage you because I know that when you go out there, you know, to the big bad world, as people say, I see it as a great big mission field. When you go out there, it's just just what happens. Something's going to come against you to make you feel offense. Or not, no, not to make you feel offense, to make you tempted to feel offense. It's, gonna, it's happened. Might be your spouse says something. It could be your kid does something. It could be your coworker. But something will probably this week. I'm not promising I'm doing on you. <laughs> I'm just telling you what the world we live in. You're going to be tempted. Well, obviously, the, what's the verse about the, the small beginning, the small beginning, yeah. I just, I really was praying in the Lord, and I felt him dealing with me that, and it's all, it all comes from a place of just wanting to get, you know, wanting to be content with whatever it is that he has for me, you know, and I think, you know, some, like Abigail was saying sometimes, you know, you, you have feelings or ideas of how God wants to use you or like even end results of what you're going to do and you know God has good big plans and stuff but you don't know exactly how or whatever and sometimes we get frustrated in the moment because we don't feel like we see him blowing up like we need to but I thought about how don't don't discount anything God calls you to do no matter just like how we say there's no science to God and, and, you know, between cancer and a cold as far as his power to heal. And don't, you know, don't discount whatever God calls you to do. Maybe it is preaching in front of a coliseum or a stadium or, or maybe it's you're teaching Sunday school and I, I, or, you know, you just talk to people about Jesus when you go to the grocery store. I'll still never forget the story that we heard. Um, I think it was at Warrior Fest maybe about the or is it like the janitor who won the person who won uh, Billy Graham to the Lord? And it was, you know, he indirectly, you know, affected Billy Graham who went on to be, you know, probably the most famous, you know, minister for God ever. And, you know, but what would have happened if he, I mean, now hopefully somebody else would have stepped in, but still like he, I don't know what else he did in his life and we don't know his name. But he did something that caused an end result of millions of people probably being in the kingdom of God. And one day his reward in heaven, I believe, is gonna be is gonna be just as powerful and as great as someone like Billy Graham. Because it's it's obedience in whatever it is that he's called you to. Yeah. And it, I'm not hey, I, I can't tell you how many I was talking to Logan last night and we were talking about you know how tough that can be because I can't tell you how many nights as an older teen or even young adult that I'd sit upstairs and cry, just cry to my mom, just say, "Mom, I don't, I don't understand. I thought he wanted me to do this, but why isn't this happening? Why is this or that?" But you know, so I had, I had those moments too. But I just really felt that don't discount what he has for you and his plan and his purpose. Try to take joy even in the small things. Yes, yes, yes. Because when he can trust you with the small things, he'll expand your territory for the bigger things. I think it was uh, Gloria Copeland one time testified on TV that she was having uh, like a blockage with the Lord. Felt like there was some wall. Mm -hmm. And she suddenly heard the Lord speak to her. I hope I'm telling this right. That, uh, have you done the last thing I told you to do? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that, Sheree? Do you know what I'm saying? Does that ring a bell? Yeah, she was like, hey, but the Lord said it, but have you done the last thing I told you to do? She realized he had told her some a direction to go in, and she didn't. She kept waiting for that other big thing. And she realized that if he can't trust you in what he's already told you to do, why is he going to bring something else? So there's a purpose for all of you, no matter how big or small. Let's be obedient. Let's be mm -hmm. people of integrity who go out there, who stay away from offense. That's, that's what I, where I was going a while ago. Stay, stay away from that offense. And if somebody does come and offend you this week somehow, pray for them. And I don't mean 
with the mean spirit of prayer. If there is such a thing, it wouldn't be a prayer, really. But, you know, Lord, get them. Show them, God. Show them what they did to me. Stop that stuff. Pray, pray that they be blessed. Bless those that curse you. And when you walk out there in that kind of integrity and in obedience, see, that goes together. People of integrity are obedient, even in the small things. Speak to that person on the cereal aisle. What? Oh, but I want to go do this or that. No, maybe you're just in food line and you're on the cereal aisle like that person was we heard a testimony about. They were on the cereal aisle. What was it they had to do? They had to... They had to go up to a person and say Reese's. Yeah, on the cereal... True story. Had to go up to somebody on the cereal aisle and just say Reese's? Like Reese's cereal or something? Reese's? Or wasn't that, I think it was like, wasn't it like the nickname of the grandfather yeah. that had just passed? The person there just started weeping and said, that was what my, that was the nickname my grandpa called me. And they needed ministry right there on the cereal aisle. Mm. And they've been asking for a sign. They've been asking for, for help from the Lord. So even, even when you're out there and you hear something really, really, okay, God, I don't get that. Say Reese's on the cereal aisle to somebody? <laughs> Do it. If you know it's God, do it. I kind of, when you were talking about, and Belinda was talking about like us being, us being well for revival, I kind of, and I used to pray the other night when we were talking about the Holy Ghost or someone, but about uncapping the well. Oh, yeah. I think we have to look at it like when we go out into this world, we have water, living water Ooh. to give people to drink. But we're sometimes, I, I'm the most guilty of this, so I'm not saying this at all in a critical way, but a lot of times we walk around like a capped well. Mm, that's good. So we have to look at it, you know, and listen, we'll mess up and God will give us another opportunity or whatever. We're growing in this. But walk around seeing, I have living water. It's Him we're offering. It's yes. not ourselves. It's Him. Yes. But I have living water. So I need to be an uncapped well who's always ready to give a drink to those who are, they don't even know they're thirsting to death, but they are. They're dry. They're dry. thirsty. Ooh. If you had, if someone came in here right now and was parched, was about to die of thirst, we would be rushing, running, tripping over ourselves to go get some glass yes, of water. We would. And so that's just sort of what he was showing me this morning is like, don't have a cap on your well. And that's all that love that she was talking about. Be willing yeah. Yeah. to give water to the thirsty. And we know that what we're giving him is Jesus, living water. Thank you, Lord. That is so good. Go out from this place today and be an uncapped well. Let it flow. I don't, I don't, I know what you're thinking, some of you. I just don't know if I have it in me. You feel like you got to go out in the streets and start just preaching Jesus to everybody. It's not what we're talking about. He might call you to do that. If he does, do it. But it just might be as simple as you do something kind for somebody. It might be that you pass somebody the salt down at Grandma's today and you just pat them on the back. And when you do, you know that anointing is going into them. Thank you, Lord, for, for my cousin. Pray for me. Pass me the salt. Put your hand on me. You don't know what's going forth from you. I, I really don't feel to go myself any further with this, but if you have a word from the Lord, we have heard such good things. I'm so inspired. I came to church excited, but I'm, I'm more excited now to go out there and make a difference to walk as a person of integrity. And if I mess up, I'm going to repent. I'm going to humble myself and say, I am so sorry, Lord, and so sorry to the person. And I, I want to, I, I wasn't going to go here, but I have to say this, and this is for somebody. And I don't know who, so if you don't have a red flag over your head, I don't know who. It could be them or watching. Somebody who's done something to hurt you, really, really do start praying for that person to be blessed. And whether you feel it or not, go ahead and do it. You don't go by how you feel anyway. You do the right thing. I uh, put it on Facebook, and I'm not going to go there, and, but other than to say, uh, I had found out some people talking about the ministry, and, and it was religious people. It was, it was not a bunch of sinners out there. It was religious people. And, you know, basically just, I, mean, I guess they don't agree with our doctrine or something maybe, but um, our doctrine, I think, is just the Bible. There's not, I don't know everything, but we want if it's there, we want to preach it. But uh, 
I didn't feel any offense. I really didn't, which is amazing. <laughs> but I didn't. Usually I might would have, but I didn't. But the more I prayed for one of the people involved, the more love I feel for that person. It started ballooning up to the point that I was like, I wish I could do something for that person. Send them something. Yeah. Wonder if what they like. I wouldn't do that because that'd be obvious that I heard what they said. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just this love, and you know why? Because of the grace of God and this supernatural power that is in us when we know Him, it multiplies what what we try to do on our own. If we do it for the glory of God, He'll multiply it. I feel such a love for these people. I just oh, I wish I could see them. I just hug them because they just don't. They just don't know. They just don't know. So I, I felt like that's for somebody here. If there's somebody that's offended you. Walk in such love toward that person. Just walk in such love. Whether they deserve it or not. Walk in love toward that person. And then God will expand that and multiply it. Say it, sister. He says to count it all joy. Yeah. Or when they talk about you. Count it all joy. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. He didn't say that for no reason. That's what we're supposed to do. Megan, can you just, I know she's taking good notes up here. I hate to interrupt her, but unless somebody else wants to play the piano, I'll call Megan up. I thought Belinda was volunteering to play the piano. Come on up, sister. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear this. Speak it, sister, the word. So kind of speaking on what Megan was saying, that um, John 7, verse 37 and 38 says, On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of the water. And we were thirsty, and we came to him, and now we flow, and those rivers are just yes. pouring it out. Yes, yes, yes. That's one of my favorite scriptures. It has to do with Sukkot. We, we teach it every Sukkot on that last great day of the feast. He said, if, you, if you're thirsty, then come to me. And that was the living water. And he can give us that living water. That's a good one, Belinda. Now we're going to pour it out. We're going to pour it out. Because he's flowing through us. Inexhaustible. It's an inexhaustible stream of him. That's good. Anybody else feel something? I just want to think that us pouring out his love through us, a miracle in itself. We get so focused on wanting to see these big things, but one of the greatest things we can do is show his love to other people yes. because it is supernatural and I honestly once you experience his love I feel that's what brings most people to salvation yes oh, yeah. yes is his love and that in a nutshell is what I what I wanted to say is this <laughs> we look at all the supernatural the signs and wonders the healings and that is supernatural but how about just loving your enemy and how about just loving people out there isn't that supernatural the love of God. Oh, I feel him. I'd be remiss not to thank God for a testimony of something that happened. Testify. When we woke up, when we woke up yeah, it was yesterday. yesterday morning, we, Logan always like, you know, gets up and goes to feed the cat and change the litter for the cat. And when she went out, but we had put the cat in my office room, which is next to our carport, has a door that leads out and there's our carport. Um, and lately the cat has taken to scratching at our door uh, at like random times at night because she wants to get in there to, to cuddle. Uh, so some nights if we're wanting to try to sleep in or we really need sleep, I, I'll just put her in the office room and shut the door so she can't do that. Well, so we had done that and Logan got up and she went in there to get her. And I just hear from the bedroom, just, oh no, oh no, God, no. And I jumped up and immediately ran in there, and she just was hysterically crying when I got in there. And the front door was open. Oh, and, and well, that's it's a side door, technically, but the door was open, and the cat wasn't anywhere to be found. And I mean, we love that cat. We felt like God blessed us very mightily with that cat, because Logan really genuinely wanted that cat. It came from a shelter, and we've been seeing it for a while. And, you know, I immediately ran to go get stuff, to, you know, shoes and stuff to go outside to look for it. And Logan went outside. 
She just went out of her phone, she didn't care. And then, you know, she went outside and was calling, and she just came right around the corner. But I, I just thank God because that, the door, I guess, it had not, it just hadn't latched. It was locked, but it just hadn't latched. It was windy, too. It was windy, and it hadn't latched all the way when we shut it. And so, you know, that cat was in there all night long. And that door, for all I know, was open all night long. But yet, she didn't run away. She was outside, but she didn't run away. Or if she did, she was back when we got there in the morning. And not, But not only that, but I mean, our door was open to my office where my computer, my work computer, my monitors, all that are. And so someone could have just walked right in, walked right out. But I'm just thankful for God because he kept us and our house safe. And he also kept the cat safe and made sure she was home. Right. So he cares about even the little, yeah. even, I mean, it's not little. That's the point. It's not little to him. Right. Things that matter to you and are wholesome things, yes. they matter to him too. Yeah. Give him all the glory. That's what they just did. They gave him all the glory. You know, I love that song she's playing right now, but for some reason, Heather, don't come up here because right where you are, I'm going to ask her. Can you just sing? This may be just to me that I just need to hear this for me. Do you know the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus? Do you know that? Is there? Because I feel like for everything for his glory, we're just to turn our eyes upon him, and then the things of this world grow strangely dim. This, this one, I want this played at my funeral when I'm 190. <laughs> I mean, do you, and we'll sing with you. You just lead us. I don't know if I remember the verses, but I, I, remember, the, I, do I remember the chorus. Yes. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow. Thank you. 